All right, in this video, we're going to do a pretty simple problem here, a free fall problem with a falling stone. And it takes 0.28 seconds to pass, to travel past a window that's 2.2 meters tall. From what height above the window did the stone fall? So let's take a look at the problem here and set up some of our geometry. So let's draw our window here. So we have a window here. Let's just say this, I don't know, let's just say that there's a building here. Let's make the building like this. Let's make it a little wider like this. And let's say that um, there's some window here. I'm going to put it at the edge of the building like this. And we want to know um, that, this, that there's a stone here. And the stone was falling. So I'm initially going to put here, I'm going to have my window like this. The top of the window is here. The bottom of the window is here. And it fell for a displacement down. So I'm going to call that my delta y. And the window is going to be negative 2.2 meters. Okay, because the stone's going to basically be falling in that general direction. So let me just draw my little stone here, or my little circle that I have. So the, the, the stone's going to be, um, it's going to be falling. And uh, it's going to pass this negative 2.2 meters in 0.28 seconds, okay? So I'm just going to put the stone there, just pretend like it's moving down. Maybe I'll give it like a little vector arrow just to show that it's, that it's moving down. But um, it that particular distance took a certain amount of time. Um, so that time that it took to fall that distance in the window was 0.28 seconds. Okay, and so what they want to know is how what what height above the window here did it actually fall? So they're looking for a second delta y, which I'm going to put in blue just to distinguish the fact that it's different that we're going to solve later in the in the problem. So we're really looking for this ultimately, but we're going to have to get there in a couple of a couple of pieces here. So I'm going to zoom in here even more than I am zoomed in so we can take a look at this. Let me go out just a little bit here. Uh, I really need like 250, but I guess I guess we'll we'll stick with that. Okay, so what am I looking for here? Well, let, let's see what we know. And we know that when we have a kinematics equation or a free fall equation, I like to set up my table here. In this case, we just have all um, y components. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I usually draw my x and my y component here if we're talking about a projectile. But I'm going to go ahead and start out here with um, with the original one. So I have my x components and I have my y components here. And I'm going to leave the x components blank uh, simply because this is a one-dimensional problem. So I'm going to I'm going to start here. I have my acceleration in the y. I have my v initial in the y. I have my v final in the y. I have my displacement. And I have my time. So we know that to solve any kinematics equation, I need three variables, right? I need three. So let's go ahead and start labeling those. I know my time is 0.28 seconds. I know that my delta y is negative 2.2 meters. And I know that my acceleration is always going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared because we're falling down. So I, I can go ahead and just write in the units here um, just for clarity's sake, but uh, negative 2.2 meters. And this is 0.28 seconds. So the basic strategy here is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume I'm going to assume that um, we're going to basically take this value up here, the initial velocity. I'm going to find it, and then I'm going to turn that into the final velocity of the blue, right? So that's that's how we're going to start out doing this. So what I need to do is I need to find out what is the initial velocity here. Of the of the the ball when it hits the top of the window. In other words, it's already moving, right? It's already moving. So I want to know when it's here. It's already moving. I want to know what's the speed right there, the, that initial speed, right? So I'm going to go ahead and find that right now. So I have four kinematics equations to choose, but which one is going to give me use acceleration, displacement, and time, and give me initial velocity? And the equation that we need to use for that 
is going to be uh, this equation here. We're going to basically say that, let me scroll down here a little bit, we're basically going to say that delta y equals v0 t plus one half a t squared. And so what am I looking for here? Remember this is v initial y, right? What am I looking for? I'm looking for v initial y because I'm going to find a v initial y here, right? And we know that if I'm, you know, I have a v final down here too and as far as the window pane. But if I'm looking at my blue number, I know that the blue one up here had an initial velocity up here and it had a final velocity. And that blue one is going to equal, the blue final is going to equal the initial of our purple. So that's what I'm kind of doing here. I'm, I'm working backwards to find this initial velocity of the y. So let's go ahead and solve for that. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for that symbolically first here. In other words, I'm not going to plug any numbers in yet. I'm just going to go ahead and solve for the v initial. So um, let's just check off what we know. I know my delta y. I know my time. I know my acceleration. I know my time, obviously, again. So I'm going to circle what I'm looking for. I'm looking for v initial here, v initial y. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So first, if I subtract over the 1 half at squared, I'm going to rewrite it like this. I'm going to have v initial t equals delta y minus 1 half at squared. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide out by the time. So I'm going to get v initial equals delta y minus 1 half at squared. All of that over what? All of that over the time, like this. So if I keep moving down, I'm going to plug in my initial values here. So my v initial here equals delta y, which we know was what? Was negative 2.2. So negative 2.2 minus 1 half. Acceleration is negative 9.8. And then what's my time? My time up here was 0.28 seconds. So 0.28 squared and then all of that over what? All of that over 0.28. So if I go ahead and solve for this, I'm going to end up saying my v initial equals negative 6.49 roughly meters per second. So that was my V initial from the purple. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to say negative 6.49 meters per second. And that's reasonable, right? It's, I mean, it's moving down, it's negative, and um, we know that um, it, it's definitely headed down, right? Because my positive X and my positive Y are like this. Okay, so my positive y is up, so it's moving down, so it should have a negative uh, initial velocity. Now, that initial velocity is going to equal the final velocity of the blue over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redo the problem now for this blue part here, right? So again, I'm going to draw my x and my y. I'm only using the y, so I'm going to keep it here. So my acceleration in the y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That doesn't change, right, because we're in free fall. But now I'm basically looking at I'm basically looking at the ball falling from here to here now, right? Because the first part, we, we, we got this information and we found this initial velocity of the purple, but that equals the final velocity of the blue. So now I want to know, you know, what's happening from here to here. And they want to know how how far above, what's that delta y uh, to salt to uh, of the initial drop to the top of the window this blue part right here. We want to know what that is, okay? So let's go ahead and fill out our table again with our new information. And this time it's the blue. So V initial Y, V final Y, 
uh, delta y and the time. So now we're talking about the blue. So how many variables do we need to solve this? How many variables do we need? We need three variables, right? So I know now that my v final y, which is here, we know what that is. It's the same as the v initial of the purple, right? We said that that was negative 6.49 meters per second. So that's going to become the v initial, sorry, the v final y of the blue down here. So that's where I'm where I'm going with this down here. So my v final y here in the blue is negative what? Negative 6.49. meters per second okay and the one thing we do have to assume about this we have to assume that it was released from rest so uh, that's just one of the, the things here I mean it didn't say that it was released from rest but really to solve this problem we need to assume that it was released from rest because um, it didn't give us enough from information to do it any other way uh, so if they say a falling stone from what height it, above the building did it fall I mean technically technically um, you know, somebody could have taken that ball and just thrown it down with an, init an initial negative velocity, right, in the y direction. But I'm going to assume that it was just fa it, it, it just released from rest and then it just started falling on its own. So that way we're going to know a third piece of information here uh, that's going to allow us to start solving this problem pretty quickly here. So my initial y velocity, again, I'm going to assume it's dropped from rest, is zero meters per second. So we're looking for delta y. So what equation am I going to use for this one? Well, if we recall in the kinematics equations, equation number four is the only equation that does not have time, right? Because we don't have time here. So what did equation number four look like? Well, that one was v squared, v final squared, equals v initial squared plus 2a delta y. And again, what are we looking for? Well, I'm looking for delta y. Okay, here it is. I know my acceleration. I know my initial velocity, which is zero, and I know my final velocity, which is negative 6.49. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for delta y here symbolically first, just because you should get in the habit of doing that. So I'm going to have 2a delta y equals v y squared, v final y because these were initial, these were all y's, so that's v final y, v initial y. So again, I'm looking for delta y, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to divide, so I'm going to say delta y equals v final y squared over 2a. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in those numbers now. So delta y equals v final y, which was what? Negative 6.49 squared all over 2a. 2a is going to be 2 times negative 9.8. So when I do that, when I actually solve it, I'm going to get a negative answer. And should we get a negative answer? Yes, we should. Uh, because the the displacement is negative, right? It's moving down, so it's going to be negative uh, 2.15 meters down. So I'm going to fill that in, negative 2.15 meters. Now they did ask in the question. Technically, they said uh, they said what's the height? So remember the uh, the height is the absolute value, I shouldn't have put equal there. Remember the height is just the absolute value of that displacement. So I'm going to say the height is going to be the absolute value of our delta y. Because height we don't give an, as a negative value. The, the, when we talk about the displacement we do. And when you plug it in here you have to deal with displacement. So again my height here, again my height is going to just simply be the absolute value of that displacement. So the height from the top of the building is simply going to be uh, just 2.15 meters. And that's a positive answer that we'll get from that. So that's the final answer there uh, in terms of the height of the object. Um, now, noticing down here, we have our table. 
Now we have four variables filled out. We could have very easily figured out um, what how long it took to fall down to that point. Uh, we have four equations. We you know if, let's say that we want to solve for the time also. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, if I wanted to solve for the time, I could have said v equals v initial plus at, right? And I know that my v initial is zero. So the time is simply the final velocity of the y over the time. I'm sorry, over the acceleration. And my final velocity is negative 6.49. And my acceleration is negative 9.8. So when I go ahead and plug that in, I'm going to get 6.49 divided by 9.8. And I'm going to get, for the time there, I'm going to get 0 0.66 seconds the time that it would took to fall that that blue distance right there so 0 0.66 seconds and then we were able to find that missing variable